So, Chris Nichols and Jordan Drake, two of my absolute favorite YouTube camera reviewers, recently did an episode on what piece of camera gear changed each of their photographic careers. I thought it was a cool concept and I thought to myself, hey, I should totally and unabashedly steal that idea and bring along some unsuspecting accomplices along for the ride. Because nothing says fun like roping in people into your schemes without them knowing. Dances That Shoot, episode two, scene one, favorito, take three. <laughs> Hey everybody, Brandon here. Welcome to Dancers That Shoot, where we talk about my loves and passions slash careers. Editorial photography, business cinematography, and Latin dance. If you're looking for camera reviews and tutorials, behind the scenes looks on set, social dancing and performances and interviews, don't even think about hitting that subscribe button. Definitely don't hit the bell for notifications when new content goes live, and don't even bother following me on IG and Twitter at Dancers That Shoot. Like, why would you even do that? So as I said, Chris and Jordan influenced me to do an episode inspired by their topic, what piece of photographic equipment changed my life? As soon as I saw their episode, I already knew the answer since it's sitting right above my desk at this very moment. But before I get into all that, like I said, I brought a few friends along with me for the ride to talk about their picks for game-changing gear, since I know quite a few friends that are dancers as well as shooters. Plus, it's always good to have support from others suffering from gear acquisition syndrome, because let me tell you, the struggle is real. It's expensive, it's a problem. Help me! Help me! Anyways, take it away, guys. Hey guys, my name is Franklin Lorenzo, and I have been a professional photographer for the last 11 years. And recently, one of my colleagues asked me what has been one of the best investments I have made when it comes to gear. And the answer to me came simple, and that is the Pro Photo lighting gear. Uh, and the reason being is because of the type of photography that I do, these products come in handy for various reasons. So let me show you what I have right here. This is the D1. This is what I mostly use in my home studio because I can, this is the only one that I, you have to keep plugged in at all times for it to work. Uh, and I can have it running all day. Followed by that is the, the B1. This one I usually take where I'm here in New York when I have to go outside or when I have to drive to another state. I bring this one and that one has a battery, which is right here. And it lasts a pretty long time, unless you're not shooting full power. And then when it comes to travel and I get booked for work, I bring the B10s, which uh, they work with a battery as well. Uh, and you can also have them plugged in if you want to use them for a longer period of time. Then when I have to shoot events, like weddings or parties, then I bring the A1X. I also use it for other creative reasons. And whenever I'm traveling, and I want to be light and it's for personal uh, purposes only, then I use the C1 Plus. And the beautiful things about all these products is that they can all be controlled, triggered with this remote, which is the Profoto uh, Air remote. Now, having said all this, the other great thing about these products, besides their amazing reliability and quality of light and consistency of light, is their Accessories, for example, this one works with a C1 Plus and it also works with the A1X to soften the light, as well as you can use a bunch of different tools to create different colors uh, for artistic desires. And then with these two, you can also use gels, which also are made by Profoto. So as you can see, I have a, an ecosystem of light by Profoto that just works amazingly for me and that's why the answer came simple to me. Profoto has been the single best investment I have made in my photography. Thanks for watching. Hey y'all, I am Isabel Freiberger and I am a professional Latin dancer. That's how I make my living, teaching, performing, choreographing. Um, but I am also a photographer. I got my MFA in fine art photography a few years back and um, I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys my favorite gear. So, uh, if you know me at all, I am probably the least techie photographer out there. Um, I could care less what camera I have. I could care less what lens I have. It's not entirely true. Um, but generally speaking, um, I truly believe that it's not about the equipment that you have. I believe it's about the ideas, the creativity, the ingenuity, and um, the problem-solving abilities that you have 
already within yourself, your own creativity, um, the way you view color, the way you view lines, the way you view story that really creates uh, the artist and the photographer that you are capable of being. Uh, I use a, a Nikon D800. Um, I, it's no reason, I don't think that Nikon is better than Canon or Sony or anything. It's honestly just when I started taking pictures, I got recommended um, a Nikon camera and so that's when I started buying all my, all my gear. And as many of you know, it's expensive so to make a switch halfway through your photography journey is just not smart. <laughs> um, I love my Nikon gear. It's been really great for me. Um, this body is, is, is incredible. It's expensive. This camera cost me a little over $2,000 at the time. I've had it for about maybe five years, maybe a little less. Um, I can't remember, I'm horrible at timing, but um, I've had this camera for quite, for quite a bit and I'm gonna have it for quite a while. Um, I've had this lens, this is the lens that I use the most. I really, I, don't, I have two lenses, y'all. Like I said, I'm not a techie photographer. Um, this is a uh, 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Um, I've been using it since I started photographing, basically. Uh, yeah, it's a 2.8 zoom lens, so you get from 24 millimeters to, to, to 70 millimeters. And uh, it's been really great for me. You get really great, it's really great. Uh, I use it for 90% of what I shoot um, because you get a, a nice wide angle and you get a nice um, longer focal length. So it's worked really well for me. Um, I enjoy using it. I use it for about 90% of the work that I do. Um, it's pretty old. I've had this since I was using, I used to have a, a D90, a Nikon D90, and it worked really, really well for the majority of the photography that I did. Um, and then I damaged it because I do crazy shit with my camera. <laughs> um, I take it underwater. I bought a really bad uh, underwater case and I damaged my camera. So that was my fault, my bad. The technology available today is amazing and for me, overwhelming. Um, I, you know, whenever I have to buy something new, which is part of why I avoid buying new things, even though I would like a new lens, is just that overwhelming sense of, oh my God, what do I buy? So my advice to you is don't get so caught up in that. Figure out what you wanna shoot and then just get something that's in your price range. Obviously a good lens, will take you a really long way and I do recommend getting a good lens because a bad lens, no matter how good your camera is, can can deteriorate the the, the, um, the quality of your image. But again, this, this, this beautiful zoom lens that I have has taken me where I need to go 90% of the time, right? So um, try not to get too caught up in your gear, in the money, if that's not what calls to you, if that's what inspires you and makes you wanna create and makes you wanna take photographs, then do it because that is amazing and there are so many incredible photographers and artists out there that know everything about this stuff and um, from the finest detail and difference between one lens to another, one camera body to another, um, do what inspires you, right? If that's not what inspires you, I'm here to tell you that there are other ways to take your photography. All right guys, I hope this was useful to you and I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, Ramon here. I hope you guys are doing well. I am a professional photographer and a videographer as well. A piece of gear that has changed my career or my the way I do things, it has to be the GoPros. I normally use the GoPros as a way of giving a point of view to my audience for they can see what's taking place behind the scene and how I am either taking action communicating with my models or how, how I am I'm capturing a street sesh, a street photography session or just to give again a different perspective. I think the GoPros are known for only for, for sports action but you get these two cameras um, are very powerful. Uh, if you use it in a partic particular way your viewers will see the world differently and I can I couldn't recommend them more to any videographer or photographer who's trying to give their audience or their workflow a different view. I hope you guys are well, and I'll see you guys later. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs>
Uh, thanks again to Ramon, Franklin, and Isabel for jumping in on this episode. You guys are the real MVPs. Hope you didn't mind me prodding the hell out of you for this. So, it's my turn. Let's take it back. Way back. Back into time. The year's 2012. Gas prices were making everyone really consider squeezing themselves into a Prius. Biden brought us back to the 1800s with his use of the word malarkey on stage, and Hurricane Sandy almost stranded me at a local dance congress in the Philadelphia boonies. I had just launched my photography business that year, and I was looking to upgrade for my camera at the time. Before I started my business, I had worked for several other wedding studios in the city, and I learned the ropes you know, on their equipment, which was mostly 5D series DSLRs. The problem with DSLRs is that they're big, they're bulky, they're cumbersome, they're slow, and I'm the type of person that wants to carry a camera with me more often than not, because as they say, the best camera is the one that you have with you. I'm not carrying a full frame DSLR with me everywhere I go, looking like a straight up tourist. It's not a good look. My current camera at the time, the Panasonic GH1, was more compact, but it was plasticky, I didn't really do well in local light, focus speed wasn't all that great, it just wasn't the kind of camera that I could really go into my business full steam with. Then I got an email from my local camera shop. A new camera was about to drop and it was big. Actually, not that big. You see, Panasonic actually partnered with camera manufacturer Olympus to create the Micro Four Third system a compact yet highly capable interchangeable lens camera system. And in 2012, they decided to drop a bomb pass from midfield for the flagship camera that year. And damn it, they didn't put points on the board. This is the Olympus 1D EM5. What Olympus did that year was very unique for the time. You have a relatively large Micro Four 3 sensor and a compact magnesium alloy body. The weather seal nails better than all the DSLRs on the market. People actually took videos of themselves taking showers with their own Ds, which was hilarious because it was that good. It shot 9 frames per second, on par with some of the best sports DSLRs at the time, costing 2 to 4 times as much. It had an available battery grip, just like the much larger Pro DSLRs did. And it was sexy. I mean, look at it. Olympus decided to give it a retro design that harkened back to their film cameras from the 70s and 80s. I mean, if James Bond is using your cameras, it's gotta be stylish. But the best part was the newly developed 16 megapixel sensor. For the first time, you could get professional, large format printable results from a small, professional body. The sensor rode atop a 5-axis stabilizer system in the body, another first for its time, that lets you handhold at much slower shutter speeds to get much better low light capability and much smoother video. And since you could adapt almost any lens to the body that was made pretty much within the last 60 years, such as this almost 40-year-old vintage Canon FD lens, you can now use classic glass with modern stabilization on a modern sensor. This is the camera that launched my business. I shot everything with it. Weddings, dance congresses, conferences, editorial sessions, maternity, dance socials, rain or snow, this thing handled it like a beast. And what was so great about it was for the first time, you can have a big professional looking rig when you needed it, and when you wanted to travel light, slap on a pancake lens, and you're good to go. I'll never forget the very first destination wedding that I shot was in the Dominican Republic. Middle of summer, high noon sun, right on the beach. While the rest of the team was running around with huge heavy 5Ds and losing about 5 pounds from sweating out water weight, I'm chilling with the M5 in a compact super telephoto lens, just getting dope shots without even breaking a sweat. Well, not completely, it was still hot as balls. Then after the wedding, we went on a hike and cave diving afterwards. Guess was the only one who had a high quality weather sealed camera with him? This guy. Now, like anything, it wasn't without its flaws. Yes, it was better than previous sensors and low light situations than Panasonic and Olympus had in previous cameras. But because it's a smaller Micro Four Third sensor, it just didn't match full frame sensors of Canons and Nikon DSLRs at the time. Though it came damn close. With the right lenses, focusing was almost instantaneous. But continually tracking subjects like in a sports type situation or with dancers on stage just didn't cut it. Way better to just stick to the crazy good single autofocus. Also, the video capabilities on it were trash. In order to connect the mic, you had to get this external adapter and put it on the back, which prevented you from putting the mic on top. And then the video quality wasn't all that great. It fell apart really quick in the light, and it only shot in 30p, which means you didn't get the cinematic look. And by the way, I'm going to do a video soon on how much I despise that word. I hate it. It makes my balls itch. I, I hate it. But if video isn't that important to you and you just want a very capable yet compact camera, the Olympus EM5 is hard to beat. 
Now, when I purchased this originally, it was priced at $1,300 worth it, but it's now around $360 on Amazon used since Olympus has released two generations of the M5 since then with better feature sets and capabilities. If you're interested in grabbing this camera for yourself or its more updated brothers, make sure you use the links down below in the description as in doing so helps with commissions so I can continue to grow this channel and keep bringing you guys awesome content. So yeah, this is the piece of gear that changed the game for me, the Olympus OMD, the M5. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much again to Isabel Freiberger, Ramon Brito, and Franklin Lorenzo for contributing to the vid. I appreciate you guys so much. Let's do this again sometime. Make sure that you follow my fellow dancers that shoot on Instagram, and make sure you like this vid and subscribe, and stay tuned for more dope content. In the meantime, I'm Brandon. Stay safe, stay blessed. Go out there and put a dent in the universe.